I'd like to take this opportunity to show you what data from a radio telescope looks like. Because when I often speak to people about radio astronomy, they believe that radio telescopes listen to the universe and that you can't create beautiful images. But you can. And this is an example of such an image. So this is data from a low-frequency radio telescope, which is in the Western Australian desert. It's called the Murchison Widefield Array. And it's a precursor to the giant square kilometre array telescope project that we're working on at the moment, which will dwarf even the Large Hadron Collider as a large data project. So what you see here is a section of our galaxy, the Milky Way, in three colours of radio light, if you like, so three radio frequencies. And you see these beautiful blue glowing regions of hydrogen gas and these circular uh, features which are supernova remnants, the most spectacular way a star can die. And there's a huge amount of science that we could extract from this image, and I could talk to you about that for hours, but that's not why I'm here. What I'm here to talk to you about is how we take data like this and scale it up when we have an instrument of the size of the SKA, and how our extraction techniques need to develop and evolve to be able to do that. So we wrote a science case for the SKA a couple of years ago, and it's 2,000 pages long. And I'm going to try and summarise what we're trying to do in terms of science in one soundbite, which is that radio astronomers are trying to build a machine that will allow us to make the highest resolution, fastest frame rate movie of the evolving radio universe ever. And those of you that have dealt with video know that that is a lot of data. So let's talk about the SK and how much data it is. So first of all, this is going to be an instrument built on two continents. So there's going to be 200 dishes built in South Africa, not unlike the dishes that you see here uh, in the slides. And there's going to be 130,000 dipole antennas in the desert in Western Australia. So those are those Christmas tree-like things that you see at the bottom there. In terms of understanding the data rates for the SKA, I refer you to these two graphics. So this is now splitting the two telescopes into their component parts. So the telescope in South Africa, with 200 dishes, produces around 2 terabytes of data per second raw data, 62 exabytes a year. But the telescope in Australia, the low-frequency telescope, produces 157 terabytes of data per second. It's 4.9 zettabytes of data per year. And we have to process that in real time as the data is continually observed from the telescope. So that's the equivalent of 35,000 DVDs every second. So to say that the compute for this project is challenging is somewhat of an understatement. There is not yet compute available that can process the data that we want to uh, collect and use to understand the universe. But we have a team of 500 scientists and engineers spread across our 10 SKA member countries who are working on uh, just this problem. How do we actually get the compute together to be able to process these data? So what we've come up with is some numbers. So what we need to do is we need to ingest uh, 400 gigabytes of data per second. We need to distribute 400 million tasks and run a machine continuously to be able to do that. And at peak, it's going to run at about half an exaplot per second. This will produce 1.3 zettabytes of intermediate data, which we have to create and destroy. And then after all of that, we produce a petabyte of imaging data a day, which we distribute to regional centers and archives around the world for astronomers to look at. 